Hallelujah. All praises be to Yah. Today I'll be tracing the origin of a Jagam speaking people to the Congo, to Koza, and as the Koza people of South Africa, and then to Israel. Okay, so you join me, and uh, this is meant to um, like clarify things for some people who've been wondering uh, how would I, uh, from a Jagam, be talking about Israel. Okay, so join me on this journey. Alright. Now the people of Jagam, actually I come from among the Nkim speaking people. Nkim is part of the Bako cluster. Okay. Another name for Jagam is Ekoi. So sometimes uh, instead of Jagam you will see Ekoi. Ekoi. It's a Bantu language and um, you find them along the borders of Cameroon and Nigeria, okay? From the northern part of Cross River State down to the southern part of Cross River State. Hallelujah. Okay, the Ekoi people, uh, I'm reading from the Encyclopedia Britannica. It is a Ekoi group of people situated in extreme southern Nigeria and extending eastwards into neighboring Cameroon. So, a, core, a groups of people situated in extreme southern Nigeria and extending eastward into neighboring Cameroon. A core Bantu languages are spoken by many groups, including the Atam, Boki, Bembe, Ufia, and Yako. They co live in, a, in proximity to the ethics of southern Nigeria and claim to have migrated from the north to that area. Okay, you know, you have them. Uh, then it says, uh, the inhabitants of Kuo, located near Calabar. So, they came from Cameroon. There's a place in Cameroon where they call, they call uh, Ijagam, okay, Lake Ejagam, okay. So it's believed that that's where they came from. In fact, they, we agree, all our tradition states that that's where they came from. So they move further south, they move upwards, they move southwards, upwards to the Bako speaking areas, up to the Nkem place in Ogoja, then down to the Quars near Calabar. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, like I said, they are along the Nigeria Cameroon border. So you have a Jagan speaking people in Cameroon. So all our tradition says they came from Cameroon into Cross River State. Now, I want to see from where they came to the Cameroon and all of that. We're going to trace it further, okay? All right. These are some some maps showing you where Lake Ejagam is. Okay, Cameroon, the Ejagam speaking uh, areas in Cameroon and in Nigeria. Okay, and like I said, it's a Bantu language, so. Um, uh, most uh, writers, most uh, historians or archaeologists or those who study Bantu migrations, they state that this is the origin of the Bantu migration that went to East Africa, to Central Africa and um, to Southern Africa. Meaning it came from this uh, Nigeria Cameroon border and then spread all the way down there. Um, some have countered that, that claim with reasons as well. And uh, I too do not agree with that because um, I believe that there were 
earlier settlers there who the um, Bantus uh, came to meet, you know, the uh, when the Bantus migrated into these areas, they took up territories of other people, okay, um, and then they outnumbered the people and took over, and then you can hardly find these other populations there. Um, I know that uh, they usually make reference to the monoliths, some stone monoliths that have actually been there with the say dates to thousands of years, like 2000 years ago. So I guess that's the reason why they say it must have started there. Okay. Because they look like uh, things that would have come from even before the time of Egypt. Okay. Uh, the Ejaga people are known to be those who, uh, from whom the Insibidi script, Insibidi writing script originated from. So, and they found those writings on those monoliths as well. Okay, so they believe, ah, this people must be very old. Okay, yes, they are old. Um, now, those who wrote these writings, They couldn't have originated from the current location where you find these writings. Because the writings describe a very advanced civilization. I mean, you have to deny the fact that um, what you see here do not correspond with uh, what would have been obtainable in Cross River State there 2000 years ago. I mean, this was this script predates the coming of uh, the Portuguese or the Europeans or the Arabs or Islam or any Christianity. It predates all of that. Okay, and what you find here, find things like uh, Congress meeting. You find mirror, you know. But you know that when the uh, uh, missionaries and uh, slave traders came, they brought mirrors. Okay. But our people already had known about the mirror and seen the mirror, even though they didn't have them at that time, but they must have had these things from earlier civilizations. Okay? These people were familiar with uh, uh, some civilization that um, doesn't seem to be obtainable around where and you you met you know their presence now in Kosovo State, okay. Of course, now you know the place is a so well developed um, state cities, you know towns. But at, at the time when the missionaries saw this, they were amazed, okay. Some wicked ones even said, "Oh, uh, they, they they quoted." Reference. So they saw the same script in Ibo land and the people probably were taught the script by baboons. That's wicked. That's wicked. Okay? You cannot see this and think that, um, oh, this is for some, from some uh, natives. No, 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 no. No. Well, you look at uh, there's a reflection there. Um, see a table set. Okay, a table set. You see a wine, a wine glass, the knife, fork, spoon, you know, it's a stable set for drink and meat. You, you, we're not seeing uh, clay pots and calabash and stone, stone uh, 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 kitchen items, no. Okay, we're seeing modern items, okay. And these things, all these things, drawings and... Uh, inscriptions were also found on stone in the area so these are people who are familiar with an advanced society it is it, you will have to deny this to think that they came or they originated from that area okay remember that um, after the flood you had uh, Noah and his three sons and their wives. 
Okay, so every other, the whole world's population came from that group of people after the flood. Even scientists talk about the deluge. They all know that this world was flooded. So you can't deny that. If you want to trace all uh, human uh, populations, they must be traceable from Noah's children. Okay, his offspring, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So, um, if we didn't find this level of development there before um, the, the, the missionaries came on and all of that, then that means these people must have interacted or picked up these from some other place because the, the missionaries didn't bring this. They came and found the people with these things and these writings. Whoa, okay. All praises to you. Look at you see a journey, voyage, voyage. Wow. Mirror. Okay. Let's move on. Now, um, I came, I came, uh, I stumbled upon, or rather, I came, I had the uh, opportunity of um, seeing or participating in a conversation between some very knowledgeable and elite uh, personalities where in this uh, area, this region, um, I happened to stumble upon their conversation and uh, actually I was actually praying to um, praying and desiring to meet some of them and um, have these discussions. In fact, that day, that particular day when I came across these conversations, I had made that prayer. So I believe it was an answer to prayer. So um, um, some discussion was, you know, went on about the origin of the people in this area. Particularly, not the whole agenda, particularly the Inkin. Okay, but um, it, it answered far more than um, what uh, the discussion was centered on. Okay, because it touched so many areas. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, like I said, they, were, they are very eminent personalities. Okay. There's a doctor among them. The, the, uh, PhD holder, a journalist, uh, you know, so let, let's go ahead. Um, Dr. Solomon is uh, um, sharing what a friend shared with him. Okay, as discussions went on, so he asked this. He sent this, uh, what his friend sent to him. He said, I traveled to the DRC some years back with a friend and discovered a tribe called Bankim. DRC is Democratic Republic of Congo. Bankim. They speak a language called Langi Nkem, similar to that spoken by the Ekajuk Bansara and Fom people. What is the connection, sir? The above is from a friend of mine living in Luna looks like we have came people in the DRC. And then um, Ita Kuku, who is an author, a journalist, a school teacher, gave his response. Dr. Solo, I salute you for your omnivorous appetite, for your identity as a people. Some years back, one of us contacted me from Congo where he was for some transaction. He told me exactly your information. I went into research. These were my findings. The Kosa tribe, that's in South Africa, had the Nguni. This Nguni had among it the Bakor extraction. Okay, actually, it's Nguni that has 
a, a group of languages, a group of languages that they call the Nguni language, okay? The Zulu is among them, the Koza is among them, okay? For my research, that's what I found out. So let's go and say they were evicted, that's the Bako, were evicted from South Africa by the Boa on account of land for their livestock. Hence the Great Trek. It landed them in Bushomo region of Congo. Their occupation was farming groundnuts, maize, etc., and pottery work. Their moonlight plays included Zango, which is the equivalent of Iko. Then came at Witting of the leg moonlight game of children. From here, some Bako families moved out to Cameroon in the Kok region. This account, doctor, can attest to your story. So, he's referring to Dr. Wonga, who is also going to give his own account. And he goes, um, just a second. All right. Dr. Wonga, Dr. Ikali Wonga says, Dr. Solo, historical records suggest that the Jagam constituted a major group among the Bantu tribes or empire, which included in the Central Africa. Splinter groups, therefore, of the Jagam stock moves towards southern, eastern, and west Africa. In came is the most northern limit of the West African spread. Publications by Dr. Crab have not have not only indisputably located the Ejagam in Central, East, South, and West Africa, they also establish the dialectical links. Okay. Then you are going to give some very interesting accounts. When I met Ejagam speaking Zambians at the University of Ibadan. Two Ajagam speaking Ugandans were my closest African friends in Canada. It was an eventful meeting with the duo who invited me for a weekend afternoon visit. We, had, we were at table sharing a meal when Kizito asked his roommate to do a market list. For the ensuing week, pen and paper in hand, John asked Kizito for suggestions and then the surprise. Top food items were yam cock, yam fong, and yam bui. Yam cock, yam fong, and yam bui. Your guess is as good as mine. Kizito had just listed chicken meat cow meat and goat meat for the market. Just to be sure, I asked what I had. I asked if what I had was what was listed. Indeed, my guess was damn right. That episode recrystallized an even firmer friendship with my Ugandan kinsmen. So, so, the Ijagam sprinkled all over Africa. Okay, so there you have it. So, um, we traced from Cameroon to the Congo to the Kosa speaking people. Okay, and if we check it, um, like what Dr. Oga said, they might have left from Central Africa, spread down. To Southern Africa, and then during the Boer Wars, where they were probably evicted, they moved upwards back through, like uh, Mr. Tar said, back through um, the Congo, Cameroon, and then Nigeria. Okay. Okay, so this is what it, uh, um, 
This is a depiction of the Bantu migrations within Africa. You see, it's coming from somewhere along the Nile, okay? Along the Nile River, spreading to come west, okay? The Cameroon, Kosovo region, then to the Congo here, Central Africa. Then you have also Bantus in Kenya, Bantus in uh, Uganda, okay? Then all the way down here, Zimbabwe, South Africa, you know, and all of that. Here is, um, now, the question is, from where did they come from? Did they all come out of the ground here in the now? You see, when, when these people talk about uh, Bantu migrations and uh, all of that, the human beings don't just pop out of the ground. They came from somewhere. I said, for example, when we're talking about the populations of this world, they must be able to trace their origins to either have Sheb or Japheth. One of these three is the ancestor. Okay? One of these three is the ancestor. So now you find these uh, arrows coming from, from the Nile here. Okay? From where are they coming? There's Egypt somewhere around here. This is uh, is Ethiopia here. There's uh, each Nubia, there's Egypt, okay, then there's Israel somewhere to the east, not east there. Okay, I'll show you a few more maps. Now this is showing um, the transatlantic slave trade. Okay, how were the slaves taken? This is the Arab slave trade from 1700 here, showing 1700 to 1900. Then you had the transatlantic slave trade, okay, 1500 to 1900. The one to the US was from uh, um, 1619. Yeah, so where where were the ports from? Where were they taking people from? Okay, you have Senegambia, Sierra Leone. Okay, you have the Gold Coast, the Bight of Benin. Okay, we have Benin, Bight of Benin. You have Bight of Biafra around the Calabar area there. So this is where going. There you have um. Uh, Angola, the Congo, okay, Gabon, those were areas where slaves were taken from. And those, these areas are uh, the Bantu areas, the Bantu areas, okay. I believe that we don't just, we don't only really have, um, there's the Bantu speaking people, but we have, when we talk about the Bantu people, is more than the language. Okay, these are people with similar DNA across across West, Central, and Southern Africa. Hallelujah. And uh, these are um, they, these are people who trace who can trace their origins to what they call the Middle East, which is actually not East Africa. Okay, they were not indigenous to where they are now. They had, for example, pygmies here in uh, uh, um, Central and Southern Africa. Okay, whose which populations were overrun by the Bantus? You know? now it's all almost all Bantu. Okay, all of this region. Okay, now. Uh, 
this is other map is showing it more clearly you see from israel to egypt down to west africa here okay and it shows from where slaves were taken to the americas to the rest of the world you have this one here from israel to yemen through to ethiopia and then down to southern africa so these are migrations that are known they have been studied okay we are not just uh, um it's not figment of our imagination i'm going to show you references these are um journeys that were documented historians who wrote these things down and i'm not talking about uh, 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 21st century references okay these are all fraudulent okay they are all part of a conspiracy to hide the truth so these people were bent on hiding the truth they, they, they've influenced the bible schools the bible schools now cannot teach the truth so the churches are full of liars who are who are taught to hide their identity from the people the true people of here so I, i'll show you just a few of them now this is a critical review or annals of literature volume 57 by tobias george smollett w simkin and al marshals the date is 1783 see what i said 1700s so these are people who at that time it wasn't the crime to tell the truth you know they, they were not risking their lives to tell the truth or the position okay they were not um, attracting hate to tell the truth okay um at this time they were just stating facts okay all right so he writes in page 141 King John II in 1492 expelled all the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, that's Sao Tome, Sao Tome um, in West Africa, okay, an island there, island of Sao Tome, that's what it's called, Saint Thomas, island of St. Thomas. Expelled all the Jews to the island of Sao Tome, which had been discovered in 1471 and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. Now, who, who is King John II? Who is King John II? Where did he expel them from? Okay. I'm going to know. He says, And from these banished, from these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, as they are called, and the Jews in Luango, who are despised even by the very Negroes are descended. Okay. Okay. Now, um, let's let's uh, let's read up. Let's go up uh, up the page, and then read from the second line. There it says the discovery of the Gold Coast served indeed yet more to enlarge the sphere. Of the navigation of the portuguese so it was from portugal these are portuguese explorations okay on the african continent the coasts especially the west coast and the west coast is not just west africa there's the west coast of southern africa too okay so all of that area was exploited now it says um he discovered the Gold Coast served indeed yet more to enlarge the sphere of the navigation of the Portuguese. Then their slave trade, it says, than their slave trade, okay? It was enlarging their sphere than their slave trade. It says, but it forced them also to extend themselves on the coasts. So not only were they trading, they were only having, they were also having settlements on the coasts. It says, and to settle colonies in Congo. See where I said Congo, that's a Bantu region in Central Africa, Angola, 
See, that's in South Africa at the West Coast area. I says, and other places which they had till then neglected. So they didn't just take slaves from there, they also enslaved people right there on the land. And it says, Prince Henry's colonies were enlarged by his successors. Now look at how he described um, these people who are enslaved on these colonies in Africa and who were expelled to these western uh, uh, coasts of Africa. Look at how it is described. King John II was the king that uh, was in Portugal, okay? Was of Portugal. In 1942, expelled all the Jews. Who did he expel? Jews. To the island of St. Thomas, Sao Tome, that is in West Africa, which had been discovered in 1471, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these banished Jews, these banished Jews who were sent out of Portugal, banished from Portugal, these banished Jews, the black Portuguese, the Jews, he called them what? Black Portuguese, as they are called. And the Jews in Luango, who were despised even by the very Negroes, are descended. From these Jews that were exiled, okay, and brought to these Portuguese settlements on the continent to work in the plantations. He says, from these Jews, the populations there are descended. The Negroes there are descended. These Negroes who are even, these Jews are even despised by the natives around there. They are descended. Okay, and remember I called them Black Portuguese. Okay. Now, if you can see uh, an image. Okay, you see Slave Coast here, you see Gold Coast here. Okay, this is the Guinea area. This is Upper Guinea. This is, there's also Lower Guinea. Um, the southwest coast of Africa. Where you have um, Kutura, Guinea, Gabon, Angola, Congo. Those were all areas where slaves were taken from as well. Okay. Of course, there were slaves taken from the east coast as well. Um, yeah. Let's go on. This is another publication. This one is uh, 1671. Okay. 1671. See, I said the references have to be ancient if you want to get the truth. The world is wicked now. The media are not telling the truth. Everybody is lying. Okay, everyone is lying. How can somebody say he wants to confirm what what Ayana said? He wants to confirm what Awako Israel said, and then you go and start googling the internet and hoping that you will find this book, for instance. Uh, 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 this book and many others are thousands of dollars. Some of them as much as sixty-five thousand dollars, fifty fifty thousand dollars for a book. Why do you think they make it that expensive? Because they don't want the casual reader to find it. They want to discourage you. So only those who are bent on paying that huge sum can get such material. That's how they hide the truth. The elite, the wicked elite, that's how they hide the truth. The same thing they do with maps. Very expensive. Okay, this is America, an accurate description of the New World, containing the original of the inhabitants and remarkable voyages there, empires, blah, 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 plantations, those parts. Okay, like I said, 
um, it is 1671. Now this one reads, the Portuguese that dwelt on the island informed the Netherlanders that few lived about 50 years there. Yet notwithstanding, the great gain tempted them to tarry. Several of them having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. See, it was difficult. The, 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 the uh, people were not surviving there long. Okay, people were not living too, too long there. Okay, yet because of the game, they still stayed. The Portuguese still stayed. Okay, he said some of them having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. And it says that John the third, remember, King John the third, King of Portugal, sent a colony thither above two hundred years ago, whom though the unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate. You see, many of them died, many of them were destroyed, but you know, some still remained. The place wasn't desolate. He says, For he sent new inhabitants. Those Jews he expelled, remember? Those black Portuguese, he sent new inhabitants who first settled in Guinea. Where is Guinea? This is Guinea here. Okay. You find Guinea is where you find uh, the Gold Coast, Ghana, Bene, Nigeria, Cameroon, all that area is Guinea. I told you there's also Lower Guinea. Those by the south, the southern west coast. Okay. Okay, so they settled in Guinea. Then it says next in Angola. And lastly, on the island of Sao Tome. That so they might be the better use to the air. That the said king sold all those Jews. What did he call them? All those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion. And cause their children to be baptized, from whom coming thither in great numbers, most of the present inhabitants were descended. So most of those who lived there came from those Jews who were sold as slaves because they refused to embrace the Roman religion and whose children were baptized. So look at references like this, boldly putting it out there. Ancient sources. That's why it looks as if, you know, when we start talking this thing, you look as if we are telling lies. You will do good research, you will find. And don't do when your heart is 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 crooked, you you will be you'll be satisfied with lies. Okay, but if if you if you want truth, you will go for truth. You will seek it. The most I will see your heart and direct you to truth. So not only really did they drop Jews there, they were also Jews who came down there from several areas. You want to see that reference, such a reference to. I'm going to show you. Okay. This is the kingdom of Congo. Okay. Luango. You know. Okay. Those remaining tribes that stayed after the 10 tribes were taken. Okay. Those were those who were sacked by. Uh, the, the Romans that went on to conquer Spain and Portugal and in Spain and Portugal by the decree of the Pope persecution broke out we were forced to convert those who were not convert were either killed, buried alive or sold as slaves to the same Portuguese plantations here in west western coast of Africa so you see, we are not just uh, imagining or dreaming. Okay, we have facts. We have proof. And uh, this is not even the goal of this uh, uh, video in itself. This uh, articles. There's a, some other articles I would, I would put out much much more um, references for you to see, so you can from there do your own your own research. People have already done this work. Okay, uh, thanks to people like. Uh, 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 one down to that engineer, uh, what's his name? Um, 
Hebrews to Negroes, yeah, that's the name of uh, the chapter. Okay, then you have uh, um, people like uh, like people like uh, Benaya who have done great job. Kudos to them and thank you for the efforts you you've put into this. It's uh, I'm able to teach um, others because of what you've done. Thank you um, and many others who've done a lot of work. We've dug into centuries of history and brought out these things for us. Okay, and there's another reference here. This is uh, titled Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya. Bilador, Gerid, the land of Negroes, Guinea, Ethiopia, and uh, Abyssins. Okay, now this one says in page 34 many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed inhabiting both sides of the river Niger. Did you hear that? The man is writing, he said, there are natives inhabiting both sides of river Niger boasting that they are Abraham's seed. This is, this is a, 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 um, this is a book written by Ogilby John, 1600 to 1676. I listen how stupid it is to go and start reading uh, a year 2015 book or year 2014 book, and then it comes to say, want to argue. There are people who the most high has sent to bring these things to you so that you hear it now and you will be without excuse. Okay, without excuse. Let's read on. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed inhabiting both sides of the river Niger. Others are Asian strangers who fled Tida either from the dissolution of Jerusalem by Vespasia or from Judea wasted and depopulated by the Romans, remember, 70 AD, Persians, Saracens, and Christians, or else such as came out of Europe. He's talking about the different categories of Jews that were on the continent, such as came out of Europe, whence they were banished, remember this one we talked about, Portugal, Spain, out of some parts of Italy, in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, out of the Low Country in 1350, out of France in 1403, out of England in 1422. You see, these are the Jews on Africa, on the African continent, on the African continent, in Africa. These Jews also scattered over this region, around the river Niger. Not only those who were brought by ships and dropped there, who were exiled and brought as slaves and put on the continent, but also those who were sacked from Jerusalem, those who were sacked from Spain, those who were sacked from Portugal and came on their own. Okay? Migrating, traveling down. Those who were banished from Europe. Judah that was banished from Israel. All of these. He said they were on the continent here. I'll show you a few more. This is uh, the voyage of Francis Pirard. 
Okay, that uh, can pronounce the name. Volume two, part one, page two one eight. It reads uh, from where you have the red lines there. Moreover, in Spain, they but seldom put their malefactors to death, as we do in France. They send them all to these desert countries to traffic there. The Mandoc meal that constantly blah 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 blah. Okay, then look at this other colored area. It says the coast of Luango, describing the areas where they are sent to. The coast of Luango, Congo, Angola, Benguela. These are all Bantu areas was discovered in 1482 by Diago Cam. It became the headquarters of slave trade. The Portuguese still possess it, but the authority does not extend far inland. You see, those guys dominated the land. And guess what? They also came with, later came with missionaries to preach to you the gospel that you say. <laughs> you believe that became a Christian by the same Portuguese. And you, 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 you believe that they taught you the real gospel. You believe that they taught you who Jesus really was. Right? You know that dumb. Now this map is showing, okay? The journey. Israelites. Israelites in Africa. That's the river now there. It shows those who from the river now. This is the about point where Chad is, okay? Then from the river now to um, the Niger area to Chad, then the Niger area, okay? Then there's the this whole area from east to west is the Sudan. Okay, Sudan, Sudan, and then those who were Israelites who were coming from uh, Libya, Algeria, Morocco also moved down to, to the Sudan. So at a point, the Sudan was full of Jews, full of Jews, and Sudan was not just one little country there, like you have it today. Sudan was all of this stretch from western end of Africa to the eastern. Sahara, below the Sahara, eastern, from western to eastern. That was all Sudan, occupied by Jews. In fact, the name Sudan, So Yudan, So Yudan means foreigner of Yuda, foreigner of Yahuda, So Yudan. That's the meaning. So you see, the it, Shows the Yoruba here, the Ashanti here, all these are Israelite populations. Okay, now it didn't just end here, from the, it still went down, it didn't stop here. Okay, from the Nile, it still went down into southern Africa. All right, it went down into the southern parts of Africa. Ooh. Now each of these uh, these numbers you find on the map here were described on this table here. Uh, number one, Sarin, one to five CE, Israelites establish attempt to establish a hero Hebrew African Empire, Roman suppression forces further Israelite migrations into Africa. Elephantine, 600 BC, Israelites established a garrison, 70 CE, Romans conquer and enslave over 100,000 Israelites. Now, this is two, Elephantine. You find two there on the map and see where the location is. Okay. Then all the way down here, Uganda. Number five, line of three kings tracing their thirty-three kings tracing their lineage to King David. In Uganda they have the 
Abayuda, 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 yeah. This are uh, Abayuda in 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 the Bible language. Abayuda is like Abayuda. That's Judah people, okay? Abayuda, Judah people. That's how you said to them as oh, these are from Judah, Abayuda. Okay, they have such a tribe in Uganda. I remember that uh, conversation we read. There were traces of a jagam in Uganda. Okay. The Ghana 300 CE, that's number 11. Hebrew dynasty established by Zah El Yemeni lasts about 1,000 years. Finally known as the Songhai Empire. Okay, it was started by a Hebrew from Ghana. Very powerful empire. West Africa. Okay, now this map shows okay various migration routes. Okay, to West Africa, to Central Africa, to Ethiopia, down to Southern Africa. These are all Bantu migration. So, all in all, the the most of the Israelites settled in Sub-Saharan Africa, West Coast. Southern Africa. He migrated from Israel down there. If you ask them their oral traditions, many of them will tell you they came from Israel. The Ethics will tell you they came from Israel. The Ebos will tell you they came from Israel. Okay. The uh, Bantu, several Bantu uh, tribes, they will say, they came from up, came from Israel, they came from up, they came from the north, they, they moved down here, I'll tell you. How do you explain all the um, Bantu words you have in the scripture? How do you explain that? How do you explain? How can you see that and deny that oh it is not happening, it's not true? It shows how strong the brainwashing is and you need to free yourself from it. Now this is an image of Israelites in Egypt. Okay? Most likely Israelite slaves in Egypt. See them? Dressed as Israelites, looking like you know like us. Bantus or Negroes, those who occupy West, Central, and Southern Africa. This is their look. Now there's uh, the DNA analysis of uh, Egyptian pharaoh Ramses. Okay, who was of the 20th? Ramses the third was of the 20th dynasty. They found that he had sub-Saharan African uh, paternal DNA haplogroup. Okay. He said, oh, that means you're Egyptian. No, no. At this time, when he, he, he reigned during his reign, there were far more, at this time, far more Hebrews than Egyptians. The Hebrews dominated the land. They dominated the land. They were Hebrew pharaohs. Okay. So he was, it's, it's a, a lot more likely that he was Hebrew. And there are several other um, pointers to prove that he was Hebrew. Now let's, let's read what we have here. It says, History bears witness to the fact that there was strong intermingling between the Egyptians of Ramses the third during his reign and the Israelites comprised who that comprised majority of the population comprised of majority of the population okay this fact would explain why the haplogroup E gene would no longer be found in Egypt after the Israelite exodus Moreover, the E1B1A gene is patrilineal, which means 
it is passed from father to son. The Bible also records that the seed of a man is passed from the father to his children, and so it is the father's lineage that determines the nation and bloodline the child belongs to, not the mother's. For this reason, the biblical records always list lineages from father to son, and significant women in the record are almost never mentioned without also mentioning who the father was. Okay, um, yeah, this one says, Therefore, if the sub-Saharan Negroes share the same patrilineal DNA as the Pharaoh Ramses, and both the Negroes that left Egypt and Ramses the third are associated with his coast Israelites, then it becomes clear because the Hiskos were known to have dominated Egypt at the time of Pharaoh. And many have proven that the Hiskos were Israelites at the time of this Pharaoh. And it says, then it becomes clear that the sub saharan Negroes are actually the people written off in the Bible. The rec relocation of this patrilineal haplogroup E from Egypt into sub-Saharan Africa supports the records of the Hebrew Israelites as well as the indigenous trans traditions of various West African Negro tribal origins. What do you say? They don't have people that have the haplogroup E in Egypt anymore. That's why I say it's not, it's, not in, it's not present in Egypt. Those in Egypt do not have the haplogroup E that this pharaoh of Ramses had. So the man had the haplogroup that those in sub-Saharan Africa had. So when the Israelites left Egypt, the haplogroup left Egypt. There should really be a trace now. If, if I mean, uh, 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 they were actually the you know, ancient Egyptians. Or, sorry, if uh, um, these are actually, and if E1B1 is actually an Egyptian, paternal haplogroup, then you should find some traces there. But since the Israelites left, that haplogroup left Egypt. Okay, this is just something you can pause and look at. It's uh, showing, uh, explaining this E1B1A haplogroup. Okay, Abraham is E1, Sarai and Isaac E1B. Jacob E1B1A, Esau E1B1B. You see, even though they were um, twins, remember the Most High said there are two nations in Rebecca's womb, two nations. So he did that miracle. There are several those who they call children of Ham, Africans. Many of them have the E1B1A haplogroup, not Africans especially. Arabs and so uh, the Moors up there. We have the E1B1B, most of them. Okay. Now, just uh, for you to see, this is a uh, um, some DNA sampling that was done, test that we run. This is Cross River. Um, we find 1,113 were tested and 87% had the E1B1A haplogroup. See that? That's high. And uh, in fact, I think Crossfire was about the highest number of people that were tested. The reason is because um, in Crossfire you have um, various migrations that set various languages and the many uh, dialects is, is due to the um, various phases of migrations to the region. Okay, you have the Efix, the Bibus, the Jagam, you know. So each time those who study languages get to cross over, they, they, they sample, they make sure they take samples from each of these, you know, and cross over here includes the Aquarium area. They got the, when we talk about languages, they include those in Aquarium as well. So you have to pick from each of these. Ibibio, Elfic, and all of that, and then do the test. So that's why you have this many that were tested. But see, 87% had the E1B1A. Jacob 
Haplo group. The Ebo had 209 were tested, 89.3. So you see, there shouldn't be any arguments or quarrels because this Haplo group spreads all across West Africa and the Bantu regions of Southern Africa as well. Okay. All right. Now this this map shows um, the the very dark areas have high population of uh, E1B1A, high concentration of E1B1A. Those uh, lighter browns have E1B1A, but not as much um, um, density as the other areas. So um. Well, I hope I've been able to enlighten you more on why I boldly talk about my Israelite origin and I hope that you boldly do the same. I encourage you, don't be ashamed. This truth is coming out now because it's appointed to come out now and because the coming of the Savior is close. So Israel is called to repentance now. Turn from the wicked ways, repent, come out of false religion, repent as Israel, seek his face. Remember, it says, My people, if my people who are called by my name choose to be called an Israelite, choose to be called an Israelite, choose to keep the law. You see, where will I start from? There are so many laws. Start from the Shabbat, observe the Shabbat, keep the dietary laws. Stop eating pork and the rest. These are things that have to do with your sanctification. They remind, they, they, they set you apart. They help you maintain that consciousness. I'm an Israelite. And they bring the glory and favor of Yah, protection of Yah upon you and your family. So, do we see again? Shalom. I hope you enjoyed the video please remember to subscribe like and you can enter your comments at the comment section below and remember that as you share this video you're joining me in preaching this gospel of the kingdom shalom